we stand together tonight, church. What a blessing to be in God's house. What tremendous services we had this last Sunday. Anybody happy to be in here tonight? Amen. I am excited for what God has in store for us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your house once again. I ask you to open our ears to hear and our hearts to receive your word. Help us to align with your will and your purpose. Lord, we want to walk in your purpose and talk in your purpose and be the church that you've called us to be. Would you raise your voice just for a moment, God? Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you have in store. Thank you, Lord, for what happened this past weekend. But tonight I know you're going to speak to us, Lord, and you're going to align us and draw us nearer to you. We thank you this evening. We worship you this evening. Would you raise your voice and clap your hands to the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. You're wonderful, God.
God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Oh, God, you hold our tomorrow, Jesus. You're so great, God. How wonderful you are, Jesus. We love you, God, and we believe in you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord this Wednesday night? Amen? Hallelujah. You may be seated at this time. We're going to move into another form of our worship and a form of giving and our tithing and offering. Amen. And I don't know about you, but in this day and age, with the rising gas prices and the grocery costs, I want to be tithing and giving offering all the more to God. I want to make sure his blessings are in my finances. Amen. And there's no better place than having your finances in the hands of God. Amen. Here at the POK, there are several ways you can give. Do you see them on the screen behind me? You got the website, you got Zelle, you have a kiosk in the back. And if you're giving by way of cash or check, if you want to raise your hand, our ushers are going through the congregation right now and they will bring you an envelope. Amen. And while you are getting your offering ready, we do have some announcements for you. This Sunday, April 17th, is going to be our Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. Anyone excited for Easter Sunday? <laughs> Amen. You want to make sure you invite the whole family, friends, neighbors, coworkers, even people you don't know that you just see. Invite them to church. It's going to be a wonderful service that morning. We're going to have the POK Choir. They're going to be singing that morning service. Amen. We love our choir, don't we? Awesome. And we're also going to have... Uh, Cake pops after service. We're going to have our photo station out. And all guests will get a free T-shirt. So come celebrate Easter with us. And there will be no evening service that night. Only the morning service. Amen. And then Friends Day, the very next Sunday, April 24th, we're also going to have Friends Day. We're also going to have free T-shirts for all guests on that day. And we're going to have a special meet and greet planned for them. And then that evening service, we're going to have Friends Day Fellowship. It's going to be a shorter, casual service. We're going to have tacos, burgers. We're going to have a petting zoo, pony rides. We're going to have a camel this year, which is going to be super fun. And there's also going to be snow cones and bounty houses. And all guests from Easter or Friends Day, they're wearing that T-shirt that we gave them. They're going to get free food. So come and have fr a good time with us at Friends Day. Amen. And then we're also going to have baby dedications coming up. May 1st here in the English service, 10 a.m. We're going to have a baby dedication service. And so if you want to sign up, you can fill out a baby dedication form on our website, thepok.com. And you're also going to see a link be able to register on our member Facebook page. So if you want to get involved in that baby dedication service, you have a baby that hasn't been dedicated yet, go online, fill out that registration form, and May 1st, we can go ahead and get you set up for that. Amen? All right, that's all the announcements I have for you today. We go stand on our feet right now. We're going to go ahead and pray for our offering. If you got your offering in your hand, go ahead and lift it to the Lord right now. Lord Jesus, we praise your name, God. We thank you for your goodness, God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your blessings, God. We want to get back to your kingdom right now, God, and we pray that you use it for your glory, God. Use it for your kingdom and have your way in the remainder of this service, God. We praise your name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and bring your tithing and offering for it. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Everybody say, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord.
Amen. Somebody say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. God bless you. you. may be seated. It is good to see each of you in God's house this evening. And if I haven't met you yet, my name is Rob McKee. And it is good to be in the house of the Lord. I want to take just a moment and tell everyone thank you so much for your prayer. And everyone that's been praying for me, I'm feeling much, much better. I've been intentionally trying to spend a lot of time resting. And uh, I appreciate your prayers and all the kind things and uh, all the, the things folks have done for our family. I, I sincerely appreciate it. I was thinking this morning... Uh, scripture in uh, Mark 6 and I believe verse 31 where Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he says come ye apart yourselves uh, into a desert place and rest a while. I, 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 I'm thankful that God cares about our health. Amen. He does. God cares about our health and there's times in life when, when he will provide an opportunity to rest. And uh, God is so good. We have a God that loves us. Amen. Amen. Romans 12 and, and 2 tells us that we are to be, uh, written, or we are, uh, uh, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And ever so often, you just need a good old mind renewing. And uh, this is, this is kind of what it's been for me the last few weeks. It's very uncomfortable for me to not be busy, and uh, but I'm doing my best to not be, and uh, I just want to say how much I appreciate everyone and your <clears throat> all of your kindness towards our family uh, during this time. Lord willing, I will be up and preaching this coming uh, Sunday again. I'm looking forward to it, and uh, amen. Uh, I'll be preaching at the 8 a.m. service as well as <clears throat> the 10 a.m. service. I do want to mention that if you're interested um, uh, and maybe you want to beat the crowd to the restaurant on, on Sunday, uh, consider attending our 8 a.m. service. Now, we've talked about getting volunteers, maybe 25 or 30 volunteers to start attending the 8 a.m. service to make more room for guests. Uh, Easter Sunday, it will be packed. And so... Just as a suggestion, I'm telling you you have to. I know 8 o'clock is early for some of you. Uh, but uh, uh, if, if, um, if that works out for your schedule, you want to get, you wanna get to Luby's before everybody else gets there. Uh, now, maybe it'll probably get out before it even opens. But uh, amen. And, uh, but it's uh, just a great time to go to church. And it's always a very special service. I'm looking forward. I don't want to rehash all the announcements, but I really am looking forward to our Friends Day. It's been a while since, we, uh, since we've had a good fellowship service, and I'm looking forward to it. And uh, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Tell somebody beside you, don't miss it. We're going to have something for everybody. We're going to have camel rides and petting zoos. And we'll have plenty of food. We've got lots and lots of food. That's always a plus. If we don't have enough food, we'll fry up the camel. We're going to give everybody plenty to eat. And uh, so don't worry about going hungry. It's going to be a lot of fun. So amen. God is so good. Brother Bracken, would you come? Praise the Lord. It is my honor to be able to greet all the guests this evening. So uh if you are a first or second time guest in the house tonight and you did not receive a yellow uh, guest card or a blue VIP card, if you could just lift your hand and our ushers will get one of those to you. For all of our first time guests, you will receive a gift. Uh, it's a beverage of choice from our cafe as well as a compilation CD uh, with several of the songs that POK has put together over the past. Uh, and then if you are a second time guest tonight, you'll also be receiving a gift. It's a sermon series preached by our very own Pastor McKee. Uh, and if this is your second time, you might not have gotten to hear Brother McKee preach yet. Uh, but he is a phenomenal preacher and you'll be able to tell through this sermon series. And it goes over the storms that you have in your life. There's four sermons in that series and you will be blessed by it. And uh, I'm about to name some names here in the next few seconds. And if I say something that closely resembles your name or matches your name, if you could just raise your hand for me so that we can know where you're sitting. 
so that I that we can come and greet you here in a second. And so we have Millie Flosser as a first time guest tonight. Millie, right over here. Good to have you, Sister Millie. And then we also have another first time guest, Maria Martinez. Maria Martinez, right over here. <laughs> Good to have you, Maria. And then we have a second time guest tonight. Uh, we have Dr. Bruce Clark. Dr. Bruce Clark over here. Good to have you, Dr. Clark. And uh, we're going to do something that we love to do here at the Pentecostals. And we're going to all stand and we're going to get out of the aisles and, and we're going to go hug each other and shake each other's hands. And, and let's just go greet each other in the name of the Lord tonight.
so good. Amen. I'm thankful for the blessings of God in our life. You know, Christianity is not just something that we do at church. Thank God for the wonderful service we had here Sunday morning, Sunday night. Y'all enjoy the ministry of Brother Holloway. Wasn't that awesome? Such a pivotal moment. And um, I'm thankful that church is, is who we are. It's just not about the building. It's not about the house. Amen. Thank God for the opportunity to be renewed and refilled. But we're supposed to go out and make a, make a difference in our life, and our world. Christianity has got to affect the way that we live. Amen. It's so good to be in church tonight. And good to have Dr. Wilson back home. And uh, amen. We want him to come and teach the word of the Lord tonight. God bless you, Brother Wilson, as you come. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we have classes to, to uh, forgive me. I, I forget. I'm not good at making announcements. Okay. Breakout classes. And by the way, I was kidding about the camel. We're not going to kill the camel, okay? I know. It just... Um, all right, it's supposed to be good, high in protein, though. All right, uh, preteen uh, sanctuary. Uh, that will be taught by Brother Jonathan Marshall, um, and uh, he'll be teaching on a remnant is restored, youth sanctuary. That uh, youth, you'll be going to uh, the youth sanctuary. My wife will be teaching that. And then uh, in the hyphen room, the Cade Wilson will be talking about the mountaintop. Everyone else, remain here in the main sanctuary. All right, you can be... I'm sorry, membership, yes. If you came for membership, uh, signed up for membership class, you walk out that side door, I'll be meeting with all of you. Just walk out that side door and come towards the front. There's stairs right over here where I'm pointing in this hallway, just off this hallway. Just walk out that hallway and come up the stairs. forward to get into the word of the Lord and if you um, standing remain standing we're going to read from the book of Psalms 150 and dive right into the word of the Lord here this evening it's been a great day great weekend and so uh, a lot of things going on and um, it's just good to be here uh, this evening and uh, having some time in the word of the Lord Psalms 150 verse 1 praise ye the Lord praise God in his sanctuary Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with string instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. Amen. How many have breath here tonight? Amen. Let's take a moment and just praise the Lord. Jesus. We give you glory and honor. We praise you, magnify you, and exalt you. Oh, Lord, you're worthy. We give you glory, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You may be seated. I am going to dive right in tonight, and we're going to talk about this subject matter of polluting of worship, the polluting of worship. I um, will take just a moment and... Uh, just to say, it's good to be home. It has been a busy week. We're nearing the ending of uh, the semester at Texas Bible College. And this past week, major hurdle. We've been pursuing accreditation or moving that direction, trying to make up our minds that we're going to pursue it uh, over the last, I'm hearing, 20 years, way before I ever arrived in Texas. And so this past week, uh, district conference meetings uh, being held voting going on and we passed um, some new constitution for TBC which uh, is a new governance which now allows us to move forward with accreditation so this summer we will try to finish out the process and hopefully Lord willing by the end of this year sometime this fall we will apply for accreditation so it's major hurdles very very excited about it and then on top of all that we had a um, overcoming stress and avoiding burnout uh, seminars that were taking place on Saturday because of the possibility of having 400 or so ministers staying over. We thought, well, this would be a great time to do that. So it just ended up being a jam-packed weekend. And originally, Shine was not on the same date, but some dates got moved around. And uh, it wasn't anyone's particular fault. Just dates got moved around. And um, it was all said and done. 
it all fell on the same weekend, so it was just a busy weekend. And on top of all that, I spoke in Singapore this morning. And uh, now, not literally in Singapore, because that is a 16-hour and I think 50-minute or 55-minute flight, if you're flying direct, is one of the longest flights. And uh, so I've done that multiple times, but this morning, I actually did that via Zoom, and uh, we had a great service. It was 8 o'clock, their time, 7 o'clock, our time. Of course, we had storms come through, Lufkin, so uh, the alarms were going off, and tornado watch, and so I'm looking at, uh, I'm in a fifth wheel, so I'm a little scared uh, when a storm comes through and you're in a fifth wheel. Uh, I had someone else that was at the same area sent me a text and says, what do you do? Is there a storm shelter nearby? And I said, no. I said, last week I just ran over to my office, and uh, literally I ran across a bridge through a woods, across a couple parking lots to get to my office, and so I was watching all of that last night. And uh, finally, I don't know, around 1.30 or so, everything was safe. And we were in the bottom part of where it said Tornado Watch. And, uh, and the guy I was talking to, he's a weather uh, nerd, I should say, geek. And, uh, and he was following it. He said, it's going to go to the north of us. And sure enough, everything stayed to the north. So anyway, little sleep up early this morning, 4.45, ready to go 100 miles an hour. I haven't had a nap. I'm a napper. I haven't had a nap today. And um, I did drink a uh, London Fog. And so a London Fog is wonderful. Just go to Starbucks, ask for a London Fog over ice. You'll thank me for it later. It's an Earl Grey tea. And uh, anyway, it's really, really good. I did have that. So maybe that's one of the reasons why I still feel a lot of energy. But anyway, it's good to be here tonight. And um, I am going to try to focus a little bit because what I want to talk about tonight is um, it is just it's pieces that are coming to me in the last four or five weeks again, and some of this goes back a couple of years. Um, in the previous service at six o'clock, I felt like I was scattered everywhere, pulling pieces together. And as a, a portion of a message I preached two years ago, and a portion of a message I preached four years ago, and there's pieces here and there, and things I've been teaching lately, and then things the Lord's been dealing with me about. So between services, you can thank me for this later, hopefully. Uh, between services, I went back and I thought, okay, I got to like cut out a bunch of my notes, focus in on what is it that I really feel led to say. And I felt the Lord really begin directing my attention to a particular um, element of what I was sharing in the six o'clock service. And so I, I want to go back to that and, and, and try to share with you um, in, in a very concise manner. Um, a big part of what the Lord has been dealing with me about. So the word praise, when we talk about praise, in the Bible you find the English word praise 351 times. Um, in the English we have one word for praise. In Hebrew you find there are multiple words that are translated into our English Bible as praise. And I'm, I'm not a Hebrew expert. Um, i talk to people who know a little bit more than, well, a whole lot more than I know. And, and now the more that I know that I don't know as much, it always makes me scared to death to say a Hebrew word because I'm sure that I'm not pronouncing it right. And yet here I am getting ready to try to do what I know I shouldn't do, and that is pronounce a Hebrew word, yada. So yada and some people are going like, I know he's messing that up and starting to laugh right now. And uh, I don't really know. I didn't go back and try to speak Hebrew and uh, to impress you tonight. But anyway, I did look up one of the words I wanted to use. But just to give you for an example, yada is a verb with a root meaning, the extended hand or to throw out the hand. So it's it basically it's like the uplifting of hands. And so I remember many years ago I had a dream. And in my dream the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to speak to you if you'll lift your hands and worship me. And I remember trying to raise my hands in my dream. I couldn't get my hands above my head. And I'm like, God, I don't know what you said. And, I, you know, you're not speaking. I can't get my hands up. And I was like, there was like a spiritual force pushing back. I need to get my hands up. And I remember in my dream, my hands shooting up after I cried out to the Lord. And instantly in my dream, there was a minister who was standing next to me with a word from the Lord. And so yada just means to extend the hand. It is to throw out the hand, to lift up hands. Um, and so you find in Second Chronicles 20, 
Verse 21, give thanks, and that original word on thanks is yada. The Hebrew word yada, to the Lord. So it's extend your hands to the Lord, for his loving kindness is everlasting. In Psalm 63 and verse 1, so I will bless thee as long as I live. I will yada, or lift up my hands in thy name. In Psalms 107, 15, oh, that men would praise the Lord. Anybody want to guess what the word praise, the original Hebrew word? Anybody want to guess? Yada. You're right. Good guess. Oh, that men would yada, or praise the Lord. Oh, that men would lift up their hands, extend their hands for the Lord, to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Now, here's another Hebrew word that is translated praise, it's a zamar. It means to pluck the strings of an instrument, to sing, to praise, a musical word that is largely involved with a joyful expression of music with musical instruments. So in Psalms 21, verse 13, the scripture says, Be exalted, O Lord, in thine own strength, so we will sing and praise. That praise is zamar. We will sing and we will play string instruments. And to the Lord. And so we will sing and praise thy power. In First Chronicles 16 and 9, sing to him, sing praises, or sing zamars. Sing praises. In other words, get string instruments and begin to sing and praise to him. Speak of all his wonders. So throughout Scripture, you find this word praise translated 351 times. You find uh, the word thanks, you, you find many expressions of praise throughout Scripture. In the Hebrew, there are at least seven Hebrew words that have been translated in the English to praise. Uh, the Bible says in Psalms 95, verse 1 through 2, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Psalms means a song. So when you read the book of Psalm, you're reading a book of songs. And so throughout Scripture, you find that praise appears to be something that is done outwardly. In other words, you can't praise the Lord by doing this. You've you got to do something. So years ago... Um, I remember the, the, the writer of the song that told the story. The song was, I'm going to praise the Lord. Now, this is years ago. I'm going to praise the Lord any way that I can. Anybody heard that song before? And then it changed a little bit. I'm going to praise the Lord any way that I can. I'm going to. I was just seeing if anybody knew it. I'm going to clap my hands, stomp my feet, lift my voice. Am I right? I'm going to clap my hands, stomp my feet, lift my voice, sing and rejoice. That's it. And then it come back to, I'm going to praise the Lord any way that I can. So the author of that song was one of my instructors, and he said that he was inspired to write the song when he went to a church service, and he looked out in the audience, and there was a man who had no arms. He had two nubs. And he was taking his nubs and he was doing this while everybody was clapping. And here we are. I'm looking around right now. I don't see anybody like that. But sometimes it's difficult for us to put our hands together and to lift our voice. Amen. And I, 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 I say this very respectfully, but I, I get around people who are, are deaf that cannot speak. They, they cannot talk. And I hear them in worship services as they are trying to worship the Lord. And what I hear is just like a moaning or a groaning and some kind of a sound. And before you know it, I find that more than times than not, you'll find them speaking fluently in the Holy Ghost, another language. And it's just a worship and praising to the Lord. You cannot praise him without doing something. You're going to do something. If you're going to praise him, you're going to put your hands together. You're going to lift up your voice. You're going to take your... Your, your shoulders, you're going to do something. You're going you know, to like, do this right here with your foot. You're, you're going to do something when you praise the Lord. Amen. I remember visiting Sister Edna Jones. She was in her 90s. She was deaf uh, practically. I mean, it was all you could do to talk to her. 
and she would holler at me across the room, and I would respond back, and she'd say, what? And she'd holler at me, and I'd try to respond again, and, and she could read lips a little bit, but uh, I remember going to visit her. I loved going to her house. I took a nap every time I went there. It was the most peaceful, peaceful place. I sit down in the chair, and I tell her, I start getting sleepy, and she'd say, go ahead, take a nap, and, uh, and I would. I just, I'd lean back. I said, this is the most peaceful house I've ever been to in my life. I'd lean back, and I'd go out. And so um, I, I remember visiting her, and she, I got there one day, and she said, oh, Brother Wilson, i got to tell you what happened. She said, oh, I had a great time. And, and she was just so excited. I said, well, what happened? She said, last night, in the middle of the night, she said, I haven't been able to sleep well. She said, I've been sick, and I've got this and that. And she goes, I just got mad at the devil. And I'm like, well, what did you do? And she said, well, I got up and I decided, devil, you're not going to steal my praise. And she said, I got up out of the bed. And she goes, I walked to the corner of the bed and I grabbed the, the bed post. And she said, I stood there and she said, I started shuffling my feet. <clears throat> she said, I started shuffling my feet. And then she's telling me the story. She got all excited and all all just all bumped up. And she goes, and oh, Brother Wilson, she said, the presence of God came into that room. And she said, I'm telling you, she goes, the devil ain't going to steal my praise. She's 90-something years old, and she's shuffling her feet. She's not lifting them up. She's not dancing like some of us could probably dance. She's just standing there, just barely moving her feet, but she was determined, I'm going to praise him. Praise in Scripture is, is expressed some way, some form, outwardly. You're going to lift your hands. You're going to clap your hands. You're going to lift your voice. You're going to shout. You're going to dance. You're going to do something outwardly but when you come to worship now we use these two words praise and worship interchangeably we do this like with revival my god we're going to have a revival god's spirit is going to pour out we're saying we're going to have revival like god's going to pour out his spirit next week beginning on wednesday we are going to have revival thursday friday and saturday we're now saying that we are going to have revival services now if you come next week Expect an evangelist here Thursday, Friday. Then just know that I am not announcing that we are having revival services next week. Okay, I'm giving you different definitions. There's like revival services. There is a um, you know what man we had a a revival in our church last month, and man our hearts were turned towards God. Now we're talking about a reviving, which is the real true meaning of the, the word revival. We're going to revive something. Or it could be that, um, you know, we got the outpouring, we got the reviving of, of our hearts, we've got revival services, and then it could be like, man, you know, a, 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 our world needs a revival. Now we're talking about we need like a, a movement to, to go across our world. And so you've got many different means. In fact, one of my friends gave me an article a few years ago that actually has five different meanings of the word revival. And so we went to a, a conference, and uh, he had shared the article with me, and we were talking about it. And he was sitting next to me, and the speaker was up preaching, and he went like, it's definition number one. Because they had revival one, revival two, three, four, five, and they used these numbers for the different words. And a little later he goes, that's, that's number three. He used the third definition. And the preacher was preaching. He said revival. And he goes, oh, that's number two. And he's like, oh, that's number five. And so we're using the same word, but all these different meanings. Well, we do the same thing when it comes to worship and praise. Okay? We have one word for praise. There's multiple Hebrew words. And then we use praise and worship interchangeably. We're like, oh, let's go praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. And we're, we're going praise, worship interchangeably. But the truth is, is that there's a difference between praise and worship. So praise, outward expression of some type. Now, let's look at, at worship. When the Bible speaks of worship, the tone shifts. There seems to be more reverence, more humility, more of an awe of God, A-W-E. Worship in the Bible is displayed as acts of bowing down. It's, it's kneeling. It's, it's this honor, this respect, this great reverence for the Lord. In fact, when you look at the New Testament Greek word that is most often translated to worship, it actually, that Greek word means to fall down or to bow down before. 
And so when you read in Psalms, you find this in relationship to worship. Psalms 95, 6, come let us worship and bow down. In Psalms 99, 5, exalt ye the Lord our God and worship or bow down at his footstool for he is holy. Psalms 132, verse 7, we will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. So again, you're bowing down. But worship is more than just the physical act of bowing down because we've talked about praise is more of the physical expression. But, but worship seems to involve an inward heart of a person. That's why the bowing down is of, of honor and respect to the one that you're bowing down to. And so you read in Psalms 22, verse 2, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. In Psalms 96 and verse 9, Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. And this fear means that of all respect. In other words, respect him. And so we are to worship him. In other words, we are to involve the inward heart of man. So when Jesus, um, speaking of the Pharisees, Jesus quotes a prophecy from Isaiah, and he says, For in vain do they worship me, teaching doctrines as the commandments of men. In other words, they, they, take, they take the commandment of men, they come up with their own commands, and they teach that as though that it is doctrine, and he says, I'm not impressed with it. They're trying to worship me, but I'm not accepting it. it. They have polluted it. Okay? They have polluted worship. And, and, and so Jesus, in speaking to Pharisees, he is letting them know that you are more focused on your rules, more focused on your traditions. You're more focused on impressing one another than you are focused on your relationship with God. So in other words, you can look the part, you can act the part, but when it comes to your worship, what is going on inwardly matters. You can't get past what is going on here. Now, praise, I can get past with it. I can get by with it. I, I can clap my hands and I can lift my voice and, and I can shout and I can do all these things in praise. But when it comes to worship, worship involves the inward part of my heart and I'm not going to be able to pollute worship and God accept it. The, 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 the psalmist says that the sun and the moon, they praise him. The stars praise him. The heavens and the water above the skies, they praise him. Creation praises him. Sea creatures and lightning and hail and snow and clouds and the stormy winds and the mountains and the hills, the fruit trees, the cedars, the wild animals, all cattle, all small creatures and flying birds, they all praise the Lord. But when it comes to worship, Birds don't worship him. Dogs don't worship him. Cattle don't worship him. Trees don't worship him. Because worship is a heart matter. Only mankind with his heart in tune with God can truly worship him. Can someone say amen? It is about a relationship. So Jesus says in John 4 and 23, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers, in other words, those who haven't polluted worship, shall worship the Father in spirit and a true, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God desires worship that comes from mankind who has a heart that is engaged in a relationship with him. Amen. And so it has always been about a relationship when it comes to worship. It's always about a relationship in which we are in awe of God. We respect God. We adore God. We are dependent upon God. We obey God. So you read in, in 1 Samuel 16, and, and I, I'm going to read a little bit here from and skip around here in the English Standard Version where the Bible says in verse 14, 1 Samuel 16 and 14, that the spirit of the Lord has departed from King Saul. And a harmful spirit is now tormenting him. And Saul says to his servants, I have a harmful spirit from God that is, or, that is tormenting. Or his servant said to him, says, behold, a harmful spirit from God is now tormenting you. He says, let our Lord now command your servants 
who are before you to seek out a man who is skillful in playing. This is basically he's playing a harp. And this harmful spirit that is upon you, he's going to play it, and you're going to be well. And so Saul says, go find that person who can play that instrument. And they went out, and they found David, and he began to play it with his hand in verse 23. So Saul was refreshed, and all was well. Now, this ought to scare us a little bit. It ought to make us think a little bit. Because this scripture is letting us know that King Saul had a tormenting spirit. He, he, he wasn't settled. He didn't have peace. He was, he was greatly bothered by some things. And the scripture says that the Lord was the one who sent the tormenting spirit to Saul. And his advisor said, well, there's a way to take care of that. Now, when they say take care of it, they're not talking about a way to, to get rid of that, but a way for you to feel a little bit you know, better about things. And that is, you go find someone who's skillful at playing a harp, let's get him in here and let him play some beautiful music. That ought to scare us because that should tell us that we, if we're not careful, can tune to music and we can satisfy some areas of our life and feel good about it because all of a sudden we don't feel bothered anymore because we've got connected with some kind of spiritual thing that has dealt with the spirit that we're feeling. You see where I'm going with this? If you're not careful, you can take praise, which is outward, the string instruments, and musical things, horns and drums and organs, and, and, and you can take musical instruments, and you can play music in such a way that you feel as though that your spirit is in tune with God, that everything is settled, but you're fooling yourself. Because that feeling that you've been feeling, that issue you've been dealing with, is right back there when the music stops. Just because you can get a spirit to, to, to kind of step back for a little bit doesn't mean that you are worshiping him with your heart. It just may mean that you're really skilled. And, and, and so he, here's my question. How in the world did the king get to the place that he is looking for someone to come in that could soothe this torment that he's experiencing and, and, and deal with a little bit of the issue? How did the king get to this place? Well, here, here it is, First Samuel chapter 15. And Samuel came to Saul. And Saul said to him, Oh, blessed be to the Lord, be you to the Lord. I have performed the commandments of the Lord. And Samuel said, oh, really? What, what is this, this sound of the sheep that I hear in my ears? What is the sound of this oxen that I hear? And Saul says, well, um, I, I've brought them from the Amalekites for the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen, and we're going to sacrifice it to the Lord, your, your God, and, and, and the rest we have devoted to destruction. And then Samuel says to Saul, stop. Like, in other words, I don't want to hear that nonsense. And then Samuel goes on in verse 17. He says, though you are little in your own eyes, are you not the head of the tribes of Israel? In other words, you have a right to speak up. You, you're, you're the leader. The Lord anointed you king over Israel. And the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go devote to destruction the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you pounce on the spoil and do what was evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. So the prophet is saying, why have you done this? Why have you kept these animals to sacrifice the Lord? And, and, and Saul's coming back and with a reply that says, well, I have done what the Lord has said. I've obeyed his voice. I've gone on the mission of which the Lord sent me. I brought a guy, the king of the Amalekites. And, uh, and it says, I have devoted the Amalekites to destruction. 
But the people, he, starts, he turns and starts blaming the people. It was the people who took of the spoil, the sheep, the oxen, and the best of the things devoted to destruction, to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilead. And Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? And then he says, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Let me, let me, let me say it like this. Saul says, well, we kept a little of this back so we could go and praise the Lord. We kept this back so we could go and offer up thanksgiving to the Lord. We kept this back so we could go and offer up sacrifice to the Lord. We are going to worship him with all of this. We, 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 and and, and, and the, the prophet is looking at him going like, wait a minute, you, you, you missed it. God, God doesn't desire your show. God wants your obedience. God's not impressed with your outward display. God wants your heart to be in a line. Let me just be really plain and bold. It scares me, and I'm speaking in very general right now, it scares me that across our nation, we got churches who want to be Pentecost. They want to have the music, they want to have the sound, they want to have the experience, but they don't want the relationship. They don't want to be baptized in his name. They have no interest in being filled with his spirit. I'm not trying to down. I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be ugly. But it just scares me. It scares me that some apostolic Pentecostals who have been baptized in his name, filled with the spirit, will come to church and they've been gossiping all week. They've been looking at pornography all week. They've been talking about one another all week. They use their lips to murder one another all week, and yet they walk in the house of the Lord, and all of a sudden they put their hands together, and they wave their hands, they extend it, they sing songs, they play musical instruments, they enjoy what's being played, they do all these things, but the heart is not in alignment with the Lord in a true relationship. They don't honor Him, they don't respect Him, they're not in awe of Him, that's why they live the way they live. They're not, a, they're not in awe of God. If they were in all of God, they wouldn't be doing the things that they do. They don't fear God in a healthy dose of, of respect towards God, or they wouldn't be living the way they're living. But they walk into the house of the Lord, and all of a sudden, well, well man, you know what? I, I, I need this right now. I need, I need a little bit because I'm in a turmoil. This feels good. And all of a sudden, it soothes a little bit, and we feel good about ourselves, and then we walk back out the door, and then we end right back in the same mess that we've been. We act the same way we've been acting, talking the same way we've been talking, looking at the same things we've been looking at, acting the same way we've been acting, and our heart is not in alignment. And because our heart is not in alignment, we are polluting worship. Pollution of worship is something that ought to concern us. I'm not talking about it ought to be something that ought to scare us and we should be afraid. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying it ought to concern us because we need to be walking in obedience with him. God's not impressed with how well you dress up. He doesn't care about your tie, your suit, how you wear your hair. I'm not saying that all these things. I'm not saying that things don't matter. I'm just saying that you can do all of that and you can put on a front as though that you're impressing everybody, but God is interested in your heart. It's the heart of worship. You know, you know, you know th this is how depraved Saul was. His mind was so messed up that when the prophet confronted him with this and said, God has rejected you as king. He's going to uh, anoint another one, and, 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 and your time is done. You know what Saul says? Saul says, well, um, will you just go with me to the, the temple so you and I can, can worship together? And he adds in the same context, he says, can you go with me to the temple so that the people will see you and I walking in there together. In other words, I know that everything's not the way it should be, but I want to keep a facade because I want everybody else to think that everything is the way it should be. 
I want you to walk in there with me and let's offer up worship to the Lord. Let's offer up sacrifice to the Lord. I know I've already been rejected by God. I know I'm not living the way I should be living. I know I've done wrong all week long. But right now, can we go inside and let's lift our hands and let's praise him and let's make sure that everyone thinks that we've got it all together. This is where a lot of people live nowadays. I can live how I want to live, but when I get to the house of the Lord, let me lift my hands, let me lift my voice, and let me make everybody think that everything's okay. Meanwhile, my relationship with my spouse is not okay. Meanwhile, my life is messed up. Meanwhile, my home is in disarray. Meanwhile, my relationships with my coworkers is in disarray. Meanwhile, I'm defrauding people. Meanwhile, I'm stealing. Meanwhile, I'm cheating. Meanwhile, I'm trying to get ahead of people in a way that I shouldn't be in the, in the way the world lives. But you know what? Now I'm in the house of the Lord. Here, Dan, let's, let's worship the Lord together. It's like Joseph. I'm sorry, not Joseph. Uh, uh, um, Judas, who, who is with the Lord. And Jesus says, uh, the one who betrays me is the one who puts his, his, his hand here. He's supping with me. They don't even realize it. And Judas is putting his hand in the bowl. Judas is like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take part of that. They're at the Lord's Last Supper. It's like get in the presence of, of one another and, and worship on something. Oh, man, I, I want some of that. I'll never forget. I'll never forget my, my wife's, one of her, uh, well, it's her mom's uh, cousin, uh, Brother um, O.R. Foss, preached in Indiana camp. And I'm about 17 years old. And it's on a Monday. And I'm telling you what, a Monday night at a youth camp, and it exploded. It was like a Friday night. People were running the aisles. They were dancing. They were jumping over pews. I mean, it was going crazy. And, and they said, Brother Falls, come, come in the hand of the microphone to him. And he walks to the pulpit, and he says, I could say just a few words, and this place would explode. And he said, and you would dance the rest of the night. He said, but I came further than any of you to come to this church service and this camp meeting. He said, and I came here to preach the word of the Lord. I didn't come here to watch you dance. And then he said, furthermore, I feel the spirit of Judas in this place. And it went from people shouting and dancing and screaming and hollering to like you could have heard a pin drop on the carpet. I feel the spirit of Judas in this place. And he began to preach, and he began to bring that point out. Uh, Judas, he said, there's a lot of you. He said, you came here. He said, you don't have any intention of living for God. He said, you just came to youth camp to hang out. He said, but you got in here in the midst of praise. He said, you kind of liked what you felt, and you thought, yeah, I want to join in. He said, but you already know in your heart you're not going to live for God come next week. And he's walking across the front. He said, in fact, he said, I wonder right here, you young men that's been jumping up and down shouting. He goes, how many of you will be here next year? And I looked, and on that row were five young men, and the next year, four of them were gone. A couple more pastor sons. They were backslid in drugs within the next year. They were sitting on the front row. I'll never forget Brother Foss walking down the girls' section. He was over in this area, and he walked by some, and all of a sudden, when he walked past them, he walks past them, and, and, and they start laughing. One particular one starts laughing, and, and she's like making fun. And, and I, I'm sitting behind them. I saw this. And he's walking by them. And it was like he had eyes in the back of his head. All of a sudden, he spun around. And he leaned over about four seats. And he pointed his finger at the girl who was cutting up. And he pointed his finger at her. And he says, do you have the spirit of Judas? And then he turned and he went back up towards the front to begin preaching. Continue preaching. I'll never forget that. I'm 17 years old, 17, 18 years old. Never forget that moment when he began to preach. And, and his title was, um, if I remember correctly, was The, the Spirit of Judas. I, I'm, I'm, I'm 55. And I, I'm, not an, I'm not an angel, okay? I've said it before. These are just shoulder blades. They're not the beginning of wings, and, and, I, and, I, and I've shared this here recently, and, and, and I've shared it here a couple times, and I'm going to share it again. But it was about eight, nine weeks ago that I walked over in here, and it was a Sunday evening service. And um, it was during the worship, the second song. It was just beautiful worship to the Lord. And I just, my thinking was that, you know, I serve as executive pastor. I serve as president of Texas Bible College. I serve, uh, you know, uh, speaking and traveling and writing. I do all these things. And I'm always like pouring out and, and always ministering to the people. And I'm like, God, 
I, I don't really get to enjoy a church service, just to enjoy it. And for the next however long, I just I want to forget about trying to pray for somebody. I want to forget about everything else, uh, who's doing what in the service, and is this taken care of. I want to forget about all that, and I just want to spend time with you. And so I'm standing here, and I'm just spending time with the Lord, and, and some people came and prayed with me. I don't know who prayed with me, but I, I'm hoping that they prayed for a million dollars, and the Lord has sent it, and it just hasn't arrived yet. And, and so I'm praying, and then the Lord begins speaking to me, and he says, do you understand why you are where you're at in life right now. All the things you do, what you're doing, where you're at, life, do you understand why you're there? He says, do, do you think that it's because you have a doctorate? You think it's called, in leadership, you think it's because you have a master's in counseling? Do you, do you think that it's because of your charisma? Do you think it's because of your connections? Do you think it's because of your experience? Do you think, and it was just a list of things. And as the Lord was asking me this question, I kept saying, no, Lord, I, I know that's not, I know I'm not where I'm at in life because of all those things. He says, do you recognize that you are where you're at in life right now simply because my hand is upon you? And I said, yes, Lord, I know that's it. And he says, so why is it that you rely on your experience and your knowledge and your skill set? Why do you do that? Because I can take you farther than what you ever dreamed possible. I can do more through you than you dreamed possible. Yes, you can rely on all that, and you can have a measure of success. But if you'll truly rely on me, I can do so much more than you could ever ask or think. Worship is a place in life. It, it, it's, it's just it's coming to this realization that God, I, 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 I don't have the answers. I'm in awe of you. You're great. You're mighty. So God, I humble myself. I bow down, not talking necessarily about a physical aspect of bowing down, but my spirit. I bow down in humility to you. I humble myself under your hand. And when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God in due season, God is the one who lifts you up. And he lifts you up not to a place of prominence, but God lifts you up to fulfill your purpose. And fulfilling your purpose always involves a cross. Amen. Jesus was lifted up, not through praise. He said, if I be lifted up, he wasn't talking about us praising him. The scripture plainly states that Jesus said, Except I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Thus he spake concerning the cross. Jesus was saying, I go to the cross, to Calvary, and I will draw all men unto me. When you are lifted up, it's not to be lifted up in a place of prominence. You're lifted up to fulfill your purpose. He fulfilled his purpose by dying on the cross. When we're lifted up, we are lifted to the place of fulfilling our purpose. You don't get there by trying to network your way there. You don't get there through your own talent, your abilities, and your skill sets. You get there by humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God. And in due season, God was like shift his hand, and he'll lift you up. Amen. So worship, the, the power of worship is, isn't that that I've somehow got a weapon. Now, I know we sing a song that praise is my weapon, but praise is not a weapon like I can go out and all of a sudden I'm going, okay, I'm going to sing this song and I'm going to defeat that enemy because I sing this song as though that somehow I got power in my singing. Or I'm going to clap my hands and somehow my clapping of my hands is going to defeat the enemy. Or yet I'm going to yell, I'm going to scream and somehow that's going to shred the devil's kingdom. No, that doesn't work that way. Now, Brother Stone King and I'm on recording right now, and I love Brother Stone King, and I have his number, and I can call him, and he'll answer the phone. Brother Stone, Brother Stone King, several years ago in NAYC, made a statement that if you're about, talking about screaming, okay, and straightening the devil's kingdom. Well, Jesus spit into the mud and made mud cakes and put on someone's eyes, okay? It worked. God told Naaman to go dip in Jordan River seven times. It worked. God told the children of Israel, go march around the walls of Jericho seven days. On the seventh day, march around seven times. Keep your mouth shut. But on the seventh time, begin to yell. 
began to praise God, began to worship God, okay? It worked. Gideon took pitchers and put a candle in and went out and, and, and on the sound of a trumpet broke them, okay? We don't go out with pitchers and candles and break them all the time. We don't go marching around walls of city because there's no walls of the city. We don't march around the city. It would be very difficult for you to march around Houston. And we, we don't literally go out and do that and on the seventh time yell, okay? So we do things because we do it because God has spoke it and we do it as an act of obedience. When Brother Stone King walked to the platform and grabbed the mic and said, this is what the Lord has spoke, this is what we're getting ready to do right now, there was no doubt whatsoever God did some miraculous things. It was of God because it was obedience to the word of God. You can't go out and just start spitting in the mud and make a mud case and planting it on people's eyes expecting people to, to receive their sight. Okay? So you get a word from the Lord. You get an obedience to the Lord. This is what Saul did. Saul thought, yeah, I can just go do what I want to do, and I can make it happen. When you go out and you take your praise, and you're going to make it work, and you're going to use it as a weapon, you are polluting the very thing that God is saying, no, I don't want you to pollute that. I want your heart to get in alignment with me. I want you to obey me. I want you to live right for me, and then I'll take your act of worship because now I realize that you're in alignment with me, and I'm the one who defeats the enemy. I'm the one who will make you victorious. I'm the one who brings you deliverance, and you're respecting me. You're in all of me. You listen to me. You do as I say. And then it, then it works. Praise God. So just in case someone misunderstands what I'm saying, I am not saying that we don't praise him. And that song is one of my favorite songs. I love to sing it. Because when I know when I'm singing it, I'm not singing it as though that I've got some kind of weapon that I'm going to go out and make something happen. But I'm praising the one who is the weapon. He's the one who defeats the enemy. He's the one who does all this. I'm just giving him glory and honor. He can do it however he wants to. So if God tells you, and I said this the other day, and I know this is a little silly. I said this a few weeks ago. But if God is the one who says to you, I want you to get down on your right knee, and I want you to take a chicken leg in your left hand, and I want you to wave it around and shout hallelujah three times, then you better get down on your right knee Grab a chicken leg in your left hand, wave it around three times, and holler out hallelujah. It is your obedience. I don't, I don't know if we get this as clear as we need to. It is your obedience to the Lord. Amen. It's your obedience. Amen. I need to stop because I could go on and on and on. I just need to stop. So I think I will. Amen. Let's stand. I, can, I literally, I, 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 this is so in my spirit, y'all. There's so much that could be said. I mean, you go back, to, you go back in the book of, of, of Jude. Go back and read Jude. The Bible says that he keeps us. And then it says he keeps us. But in the middle between he keeps us and he keeps us, it says keep yourself. And you're like, okay, how... Do I do that? And who, who's doing the keeping? I thought you kept me, and then you said you kept me, and now you're saying you keep yourself. I say, what? And then you read it. Keep yourself, this love, by praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, what's praying in the Holy Ghost? What's praying in the Holy Ghost? Praying in the Holy Ghost is when, when I, I don't even know what I'm really praying for. This Moanings and groanings. The Spirit. Oh, so it's really the Holy Ghost doing the praying. Oh, so me keeping myself, I don't even really keep myself. I just join in and allow the Holy Ghost to pray through me. It's a God thing. I, 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 the most amusing way I can say this is, and I've given this illustration before, it is, it's the mouse walking across the bridge with the elephant. And the bridge shakes, and the mouse looks up and says to the elephant, man, we shook that bridge, didn't we? The mouse didn't shake the bridge. On our own, we are nothing. But with him, we got everything that we need. It's not my talent. It's not my abilities. It's not my mannerism but yet I join in in obedience to him and God <laughs> praise
Praise God. Amen. Would you just like to lift, lift up your voice and just give him some, some praise right now? Just give him some respect. Would you like to just be in awe of God? God, I'm in awe of you. God, I'm in awe of you. It's you, oh Lord. It's always been you. I respect you. I give reverence unto you, oh God. God, help my heart to be right, my mind, my spirit to be right. God, let my words be right, my thoughts be holy. God, let me worship you in the beauty of holiness. In the name of the Lord, God, I want to worship you in the beauty of holiness. I praise you. I praise you. I worship you. God, cleanse my heart. Cleanse my mind. God, help me not to go through motions. God, help me engage my heart. Worship and praise to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. We won't try singing it right now, but I'm reminded of the words. It's a more modern song, but I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Amen. How many want to go back to the heart of worship? Because it's all about you, Jesus. It's always been about you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. You want to sing it? Amen. Let's let's try it. Let's try singing it. And it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made it. For it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you, Jesus. I don't remember all the words of the verse, but I know it says, When the music fades and all is swept away, I simply come Holy Lord I will bless your heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. When the music fades and all is swept away, and I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, man, that line.
mind. I bring you more than a song. Ha, my word. That sums it up right there. Amen. I bring you more than a song. You desire more than just me singing something. Amen. You want my heart. Amen. How many love the Lord tonight? Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for allowing me just to share from my heart tonight. Amen. Love you. Good to see everyone. God bless. Thank you all of our guests for being with us tonight. God bless you. Let it fall fresh.